When an administrator installs applications in an AppStream image, every icon on that image is delivered to every user that connects to that fleet. But using dynamic applications, we completely remove the user's visibility of applications they cannot use. Applications are delivered based on Active Directory group membership. It is also important not to give users access to AppStream services if they don't have any AppStream applications to access. This is explained in section 8.11. To install the dynamic applications components, the local image builder administrator will need to log on to the image builder and create the dynamic application provider environment. Step one is to create a folder called dynamic apps in the root of the C drive. Copy in and extract dynamic apps.zip, which is to be supplied by Nuvens, into this folder. Ensure that this is extracted to the dynamic apps folder itself and not any subfolders underneath it. As the extracted files will be copied in from the outside of the instance, the administrator must ensure that each of these files is unblocked by the operating system. So to do this, right click on each of the extracted files and in the security section at the bottom, if it says unblock, tick this and OK it. Step two is to create a folder called C Dynamic App Icons. This is where the local administrator will put the application icons so they can be converted to base64 format so the administrator can use this information later in Workspaces Manager to assign icons to the applications. AppStream doesn't use these icons directly, it's just an area where the administrator can store PNG icons that represent the applications and have them created to base64 via a PowerShell script. Please refer to section 8.3.1 of the documentation for creating the application icons. Step 3 is to create a folder under the Dynamic Application Icons folder called Encoded. This is where the Base64 encoded text files will reside when they are converted in section 8.3.1. Step 4 is to amend the application session script. Edit the config.json in the location AppStream session scripts and put in the following entry in the sh uh, shown below. It will invoke the dynamic application functionality which supplies the applications to the users. We're now going to create a base64 string for the application icons. Copy in the file getBase64 of png.ps1 from the C Dynamic Apps folder into the C Dynamic App Icons folder. The administrator will need to amend this with your own application PNG files. As an example, there are two icons in our finance and catering apps which have been copied into the C Dynamic App Icons folder. Now run the PowerShell script to obtain the Base64 files of those in text format. It puts them in the encoded subfolder. These will be used later to create dynamic applications in the Workspaces Manager admin portal. And here they are. If you don't know how to create a PNG application for your icon, it's quite simple. If you go to the Image Assistant, And then if you want to add an application, so for example, we'll add something like Notepad. And we'll just enter that. Now notice the icon path and it puts a PNG in this particular icon path. And that icon path is Program Data Amazon Photon App Catalog Helper App Icons. This is the icon that you can pick up from here and then you can place back in the application icons folder. And then you can encode that and obviously amend that particular script. Dynamic applications do behave differently on an image builder when testing applications from the image assistant and creating a new image. Dynamic applications will not show up to test, but non-dynamic applications will on the image. For dynamic application functionality to be available, select Enable Dynamic App Providers with the checkbox. If the administrator wants to test the applications that are published dynamically, they must do so via the usual menu shortcuts, etc. We will add the dynamic applications later on using Workspaces Manager.
To enable the user to use dynamic applications in AppStream, the user must be placed in a top-level administrator group specified by the administrator. This group is specified in Workspaces Manager, Options, Applications, and you'll be able to see the AppStream dynamic app group down here. This means that a CSV will be generated for them, even if they don't have access to the applications. The applications will be granted using separate Active Directory groups per the application shown later on. To add a dynamic application to AppStream, go to Workspaces Manager Portal, go to Options, and then AppStream Apps. You'll see there, here that I've already got three pre-configured. Let's go into one and see what I've set. So first of all, you need to put an application name in. This is displayed to the user. Then you need the application AD group name. So in this case, a DA notepad. The users need to be individually placed in this group and no group nesting will actually work. So be careful of that one. The application type is effectively a free field. Um, so it can be utility or technology. Uh, the license type, I would set that as, as free because it's not really applicable to AppStream. So if you've got an application on AppStream, then the chances are anybody can use it. Uh, if you did want to put this down to the number of people that can access it at a time, then you can put this to paid and put a license count in here of how many licenses you're actually used. You also need to select this as an AppStream dynamic app. And then the next bit is whereabouts on the image builder the executable or batch file is located. And then finally, this is the base64 encoded format for your PNG icon for this particular application. If you want to go and add your own application, just go up here to add application, deselect Workspaces app, and then fill in the fields appropriately to how what I showed you earlier on. Once you've completed adding your applications in Workspaces Manager, it's time now to assign them to users. You can do this via two ways. You can either put the users individually into the Active Directory groups assigned with those applications, and remember there is no group nesting within this, otherwise it will not work. Or you can assign the application to the user in Workspaces Manager. So you would go into Users, you would search your domain, and you would find the user that you want. Then go to add app, assign application and then select your application from the list that you put in. So I will give myself two of the dynamic app stream apps. I'll give myself notepad and I'll give myself paint. And that's it. The user's CSV file will be updated within about a 20 minute period whilst the task scheduler completes. If it was urgent and you didn't want to wait 20 minutes for this, then what you could do is to go to your Workspaces Manager portal and then put in Hang Fire and then select the reoccurring jobs. If you then select Sync AD Groups and do Trigger Now, that will then complete in a short period of time. There's also a job in there called Dynamic App Files. Trigger this as well as this will update the CSV files. The user's CSV file then will be updated with the applications accordingly. If you want to remove an application from the list assigned to users, simply go into the application and select delete. Once you've deleted it, go to update and then update dynamic apps. And after a 20 minute period, this will actually go off the user's CSV files themselves. To remove a dynamic application from the user, you can either remove them directly from the Active Directory group, or you can go into Workspaces Manager portal, go to Users, search for your user in the domain, go to Assign Application, and then just click on the red icon and you'll see it's just been removed. So you'll have to wait about 20 minutes or you can use the Hangfire console to go and update the security groups so their CSV files will be updated.
As we've gone along, we've been referring to CSV files for users. These are configuration files that are used to deliver dynamic applications based on Active Directory groups and are held on the Workspaces Manager appliance in a share called AppStream Apps. These will be read-only to users and full access to administrators. Each user who accesses AppStream and uses dynamic applications will have one and is written automatically by Workspaces Manager on a cycle of 20 minutes. If a user is in the top level group, then they will get one of these CSV files, even if they have no applications assigned to them. The information contained within each of these files will provide access to the applications that the user is granted via the Active Directory group. So let's, in, let's look into one. So you will see here, you've got the display name, you have the launch path, and you have the icon data. This is all that AppStream requires to actually deliver the application to the user. Again, these are updated every 20 minutes by Workspaces Manager. You can download Workspaces Manager from the AWS Marketplace, or please contact us here at Nuvens if you'd like a 30-day free trial.